This is a Red FM Vancouver podcast. Make sure you hit subscribe for more great content. For further info, log on to redfm.ca. Tom Korski, investigative uh, reporter, Han, at the oh, Black Lock, the editor of Vine, Mirren uh, Alne, as well. Tom, good morning. Good morning, Harjinder. Thank you very much for joining us. Um, could you update us about this V charity scandal? What is the latest situation there now? The latest is the Commons Finance Committee, uh, our gender, has uh, voted six to five for documents, not just any documents. They want cabinet documents. Those are secret. And the committee said, we don't care. We want cabinet to surrender documents based on the grant awarded to We Charity so they can uh, get it by the MPs, and they can show it to every taxpayer in the country. They want to find out if the documents confirm what was sworn testimony by the Kielberger brothers and and a very rare appearance by the Prime Minister of that committee, the entire official story of how We Charity was selected for this program. Uh, I understand that you have done a lot of work on this. There's a lot of confusion. And uh, what do you make of this Kielberger brothers' the prime minister trudeau's testimonies what he said they're not my friends i knew them what is the reality the kielberger brothers are very interesting and unusual if i can say they are federal contractors but they have a relationship with the prime minister's office and the minister of finance that isn't like an ordinary contractor you will have contractors who listen to your show who cannot call the prime minister's office but they did mhm you will have contractors who will do ordinary course of business with a government who don't hire the minister of finance's daughter or give him a free african safari but they did and you will have contractors who will never in a million years receive a grant up to 43 and a half million dollars to run a program without having to bid on it but they did it's a very unusual circumstance and there was a lot of money involved not only for we charity but mm-hmm. we know for the minister of finance who failed to disclose 41000 in gifts we've discussed in the past that's against an act of parliament and the prime minister's family that collected we estimate about $560000 in speaking fees expenses and free trips to london and new york very complicated relationship i agree mhm and the brothers were asked interestingly that a law firm was hired a pre- private investigator was hired to go after those two reporters did you find their answers were satisfactory they were not satisfactory they were quite evasive they were uh, you know the, the kielberger brothers in their testimony these are obviously skillful communicators and they uh, seem to apply that they had a, uh, they had an interesting story but they omitted certain details and other questions like the one you just posed were never answered plainly for instance the prime minister said as late as the 8th of may he had no idea that his wife's favorite charity was up for a 43 and a half million dollar grant but we know 3 days before the kielbergers had called the prime minister's office and they spoke to a policy director that's a big deal uh, our gender I don't know anyone who knows that man's number mm-hmm. but they did and uh, then they were referred to the department and before you know it they're up for the large grant to run this program uh, I thought their testimony was not helpful to their cause the program of course is dead the contract is dead the grant is withdrawn but there are so many questions that remain and uh, we say in the business our gender everything comes out eventually all questions will be answered it's just a question of time and also um you know even after everything else now some people are still not convinced about uh, the prime ministers do you think that he has become invincible and uh, people don't want any election yet they uh, don't want an election least of all the opposition parties except the uh, bloc quebecois which uh, has its own issues just in the one province uh, our gender i i i think they have a problem that is more nuanced than this than than 
It's just simply uh, some of the polling data. You have a finance minister who uh, really has a very serious issue with integrity. No one understands why he hasn't resigned. It was interesting in the prime minister's testimony that there were many things that he could not recall clearly. But the one thing he recalled with crystal clarity is that his finance minister never, never disclosed the African safari, the free trip, the gifts, or the fact we charity hired Bill Morneau's daughter. That they remembered really well. That doesn't look good for Bill Morneau, as we've discussed in the past. I don't see how he can continue as finance minister Nobody else does either. He's disappeared since he testified in the Finance Committee. He's vanished. He's had no public appearances or comment. That's not a good idea. And as far as the Prime Minister, you know, there was a benefit of a doubt for a man in a moment of crisis. And where is that now? So much money went out the door, hard gender. And now people start to say, you know... It looks like there was favoritism. It looks like there was some Mm -hmm. cronyism. And it was the old Ottawa game. It's who you know. Well, in the beginning, uh, Tom, everybody was saying that uh, they will probably sacrifice uh, Bradish Chagar, the Minister for Youth. Then they said, um, maybe, you know, after Trudeau's testimony, the finance minister has to go. Now they're saying mere shuffle will do it. They're going to shuffle the cabinet and uh, maybe... Bill Morneau will be a minister of somebody, something, some other department, and that's the end of it? It's hard to believe. Ms. Chagger, there is no doubt, they, I agree with you, they tried to pin the blame on her. No one believed that she was the principal involved in this. It's inconceivable the Minister of Finance can continue. They are consumed by this now, Harjinder. They're not talking about the economy or, or the pandemic. They are consumed by this scandal and additional questions about money that was given to other federal contractors in a hurry. We've spoken before. In the early days of the pandemic, they were borrowing $30 billion a week. Mm-hmm. A lot of money went out, and there was a lot of questions. But you know, on the question of the finance minister alone, integrity is not a game of catch me if you can. And Bill Morneau has now done this three times. He gets caught. He says, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. He pays a small fine and continues Even members of his own party say that's enough now. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's say the prime minister steps down. Let's say that uh, we face another federal election. Is the conservative party really ready for the next election? Well, they need a leader. There's no doubt about it. And it's a big question as to who that leader will be. And that matters. Uh, there is, uh, there are shades of opinion within the Conservative Party. Uh, there are people who have different views and a different worldview. And there is also the issue of this deficit spending. The parliamentary budget officer has told MPs, Hargender, he's warned them every chance he get. He says, look, at you have to let these temporary programs expire or you will face a tax increase we haven't seen in a generation. Parliament is in a very tight spot right now. They're not enjoying their summer, I can tell you. And there are so many problems that now are not being addressed that it's a question mark for whoever the next prime minister is. Well, Peter McKay, then they were talking about Aaron O'Toole. No, Pierre Polliver has emerged now. What do you think that's going to be a future leader? Although Apolyev is a, an interesting character, he is uh, from Alberta, he's a member of Parliament for a riding here in the uh, Ottawa Valley, eastern Ontario, called uh, it's Carlton County, just outside of town. A uh, very sharp man, he's nobody's fool. He's, he's actually quite good-humoured, although it doesn't come across. <laughs> in these uh, committee hearings. I I don't think he will run. He has a very young family. Mm -hmm. Um, 
But uh, the conservatives, there's no doubt about it. They, 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 they're, they're, uh, they're distracted, as any party would be in the middle of a leadership contest. But everyone knows they, they have to get their ducks in a row. This applies to the government, too. They, they, we have to move on, gender. There are serious problems with the economy that have to be addressed. And they keep hitting the ditch on, on issues like these sole source contracts. And they have to get a handle on that. So what do you think now the future of this scandal is done? It's, what do you think is finished or is this uh, over with? I think the Minister of Finance has to go. I think the Prime Minister has to answer some questions. I think that when you're caught, you do suffer a loss reputationally. It's hard to take someone's word when they when this keeps happening. And uh, the, the Liberal Party, her gender, did lose a million votes in the 2019 campaign. They, they got elected with a minority government with a 33% of the popular vote. That, that's not a ringing endorsement. There's not much more ground they can lose. They lost a lot of members in B.C. Mm-hmm. And uh, their, their future looks pretty tight. I, I think they're sort of in a tight spot. The next election is 2023. Well, four years, but of course, minority can happen any time. Uh, as I mentioned, the Quebec members are just uh, panting. They can't wait to have an election because they're just fighting in their own backyard. They don't have to run the go to the trouble of an expense of a national campaign. Uh, there's no sign that the New Democrats are anxious and the Conservatives are distracted. I don't think we're going to have an election this year. I would be surprised if you don't have a vote next year because all the chicken come home to roost, including that uh, $1.3 trillion federal debt. Mm-hmm. Anything in closing, uh, Tom? Oh, stay tuned, Hargender. It's just too interesting. We always say there's nothing more interesting than interesting people in trouble. You, you have to stay tuned. This is good. Thank you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Hargender. Thank you for listening to another Red FM podcast. Don't forget to hit subscribe and check out our Red FM Canada YouTube channel. For further info, log on to our Red FM social media platforms or visit redfm.ca.